Bill from San Diego. <laughs> I Bill. hate pictures, but I love you. And thank you for what you're doing. Thank you oh. for being such a credible and mm. integral part of our culture, our world. We are alive. We will get by. We will survive. We are Bike for Humanity. I'm in San Diego. I'm in front of the mural of life. And you are in one of my favorite places on earth, Crested Butte. Hey, do they ever pave the road up there? We have some paved roads here now, so you can still you can still find dirt roads if you're looking for them. But uh, yeah, we we've got some pavement. I'm talking about the road we used to ride in there on the USA Pro Challenge and the Tour of Colorado bike race. Oh, uh, nice! Well, that was just fantastic, and I just love it. What is better than coming into Crested Butte and seeing we are literally at the end? Of the line. <laughs> it's the true. The line, we have nothing but perfection. We have mm. mountains, we have sky, we have earth, we have water, we have rock, we have people, we have bears, we have animals, <laughs> we have elk, we have eagles. What could be better? We're having the time of our life here. Mm. Blister. <laughs> When's the last time you were in Crested Butte, Bill? You were going to ask me when the last time I had a blister was. <laughs> no. <laughs> I get all kinds of different kinds of blisters. So ah. anyway, so when we got to UCLA, this was 50 years ago. Coach Wooden, on the first day of practice, he pulled us aside and said, young men, this is how you put your shoes and socks on. And we thought he was crazy. But he was teaching us the lessons of life how to take care of your equipment, the equipment that you always review, the equipment that you give us the credible information on, hmm. so that the equipment that we needed would never fail us, would hmm. never fail us, and that we would never have uh, a blister. Now it turns out that blister is cool. So <laughs> never know, 50 years, a lot of things have gone down. We're, we're ready to go here as we battle this hmm. COVID-19 virus. Oh my gosh, this is the most serious daunting and terrible opponent that I have ever faced in my lifetime. And I'm now 67 years old. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we're going to talk a lot about this pretty cool thing you're involved with, Bike for Humanity. Um, before we get there, though, I think there might be some folks that are just a bit surprised to learn that one of the 50 greatest players in NBA history, one of the best college basketball players ever, loves bikes. So I love you, my bike. Can I you talk? Ride, and I ride to live. My bike means everything to me. Hmm. I've been riding my bike, Jonathan, since I was five years old. Uh, we grew up with nothing. I live in my hometown of San Diego. Both my parents worked. We lived paycheck to paycheck, but I had the greatest childhood ever. My parents the most wonderful people on earth, but zero interest in sports. But one Saturday morning when I was five years old, my dad took me down to the police auction and I got a bicycle, my very first bicycle. And within a week, I outgrew it. And so I rode it back to the police auction the next weekend. And I rode up there and the, and the officer looked at me and this was a very tight community, wonderful place to grow up, idyllic. And he looked at me and he, he rubbed my little burr head, my red head, and he said, Billy, just come on in here. You just take whatever bike you want. And when you outgrow that one, come back and get another one. And so huh. that really has been the story of my life. I've been riding ever since. Huh. And I love all aspects of cycling. I mm. love physical fitness. I love nutrition. I love preparation. And I, I love repetitive motion. I love exercise what my bike gives me though is confidence hmm. it gives me self-esteem it gives me a sense of accomplishment and it really gives me that, that measure of freedom and independence and the ability to go places that i cannot get to on my own now yep. the bike is the perfect metaphor it's like the bridge just think of the golden gate bridge or any bridge over any of these incredible chasms that we cannot cross, but they build a bridge and we can get across it. 
Mm -hmm. and now we have a bicycle, and while I cannot walk from here to Yosemite up in the upper left-hand corner, or to the <laughs> Horseshoe Bend in the upper right-hand corner, or to Death Valley is a risky point in the up in the middle, the top. Or I can't swim to Hawaii. I can't hike in the Colorado and the California redwoods in the lower left. I can no longer go down to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. I can no longer go to the Colorado Plateau, but I can ride my bike there. And I do ride my bike to all these places. And I love my bike. And I love being alive. And those two things are inseparable in my, in my life because the, what my bike allows me to do is to sweat, to feel the wind and the sun on my face and all the different great things that I love about bicycling. And at the end of the day, I'm tired. I'm tired physically, but I am inspired and socially and emotionally and psychologically and spiritually. And the longer I ride my bike, the better I feel. And my health, one of the things that we're driving here with Bike for Humanity is individual health. And so my health is not something that you take for granted because I am uh, the most injured athlete ever. I mean, I, I spent half my adult life in the hospital. I've had 38 orthopedic operations. And uh, so I have to work on it constantly. And when you get to the end of the line, the end of the road is Crested Butte. The end of the line <laughs> is the water, the pool, the weight room, and the bike. And so I, my passion has always been cycling. And the, the, the fact that I can still ride my bike all day, every day, is just uh, as great a joy, as great a satisfaction, as great a privilege mm -hmm. as I have ever had in my life. I love my bike, and I love being alive. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And you see the mural behind me. Uh, yes, I can. It's amazing. I just wanted to make sure that you could see that, because I can see it. Sometimes, sometimes we see different things, Jonathan. We so do. I just wanted to see this. <laughs> this is true. Um, the mural is amazing. Um, I'm still, there's a, there's a mystical or magical quality to it. So I'm not, I'm not totally sure if this is more of a mind's eye type of thing, or if this has, you know, actually been stenciled carefully onto the wall behind you. This has been created by friends of mine under my guidance and direction. It was my vision to put it all together because this is in the weight room. This is the mural in the weight room. Now, one day, Jonathan, I'll come back on and we will do a virtual tour of the weight room. Because Whoa. from fantastic, I'm sure you can tell. Yeah. The guns. <laughs> but I love the weight room and I try to get in there every single day. Huh. And as it was evolving, uh, I, we just kept adding more and more things. And then it got to the point where, okay, we're right there, but we need one final touch. We need, we need the space. We need the mindset of if I can't be out there and I have to be here, mm -hmm. let's bring out there here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I thought and I dreamed and I made notes and I wrote stuff down and I moved things around, massaged it around. And then, you know, I love the sunshine. So we got the sunshine, right? We got the sunshine right there. Okay. <laughs> and I love the sky and the stars and the Milky Way is right there. And Death Valley, Mother Nature's greatest sports arena, Yosemite, the epitome, uh, the Colorado River, the source of all of our lives here in the Southwest. Uh, Monument Valley, the Grand Canyon, the Colorado Plateau, just south of, uh, 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 you know, just outside of Durango there and Moab ultimately. And then uh, below me, below my shoulders is, is a beautiful high Sierra vista huh. with lakes, and glaciers, and rivers, and creeks. And, and then on, uh, at the bottom, we have the Colorado, I mean, the California Redwoods, which uh, 
we are very, very fond of, and yeah. to ride your bike through the big redwood forest, oh, I, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I'm alive. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, how about Bike for Humanity? Let's talk about Bike for Humanity. This is the genesis of a people who, when the COVID virus hit, COVID-19, when it took over and devastated everything, we said, hey, we are people of action. We're not going to sit around and wait for somebody else to take action. We're going to get something done ourselves. So we started this program, Bike for Humanity. We have an incredible website, bikeforhumanity.com. It's not very complicated, bikeforhumanity.com. Spell it all out, yeah. not case sensitive. But our purpose is fourfold, is fourfold, and that is hope, health, community, and service in need. Service in support of the people who are in need. And the overall purpose is to deliver food and medical care and medical supplies to the people who have, whose lives have been devastated, devastated by COVID-19. So let's just start with hope a little bit. People are terrified. People are afraid. People are scared. And those are natural, emotional aspects of any time you're up against it. And so we have learned over the course of our lives that, hey, when you're afraid, when you're scared, when you're anxious, don't sit there and just keep thinking about it. It's only going to make it worse. Mm -hmm. Do something about it. So we got to work. Then the next thing is health. Health is the absolute foundational platform of everything good in life. With your health, anything is possible. Without it, you can't get anything done. And this COVID-19 virus has absolutely just taken so many different people down. And so we have to work on our health. That is nutrition. That is hydration. That is hygiene. That is exercise. Then we are all about community. We are about the team, the team coming together and realizing that as a group, anything is possible. The strength of the team is the strength of the individual, but because of the regulations and stipulations of the CDC with COVID-19, we cannot be together. So everything has to be virtual. And so we have come up with this virtual event. It's going to be April 25th and a Saturday morning, free to sign up for, free to participate. This is a totally free event. At the end of the day, the only thing we ask is that you take a reflective moment and realize how fortunate and privileged we are to be healthy, to be able to do something in the world of sport and participation and exercise, whatever it is. It can be a solo bike ride. It can be a walk in the, in the neighborhood. It can be just doing some jumping jacks, some push-ups, some calisthenics, some isometrics. Meditation, it, mean, it doesn't mean anything what you do. Mm -hmm. What is important, though, is that you understand that with privilege comes responsibility, duty, and obligation the obligation to help those who can't help themselves right now. The people who were sick, the people who were dying, the people who were all alone, the people who have lost their jobs, who have lost everything. And so we have come together as a virtual community. This is not a group ride. This is not a group participation in terms of actually being physically next to each other. This is a program where we are going to work separately, but together forever to make a difference in the lives of people who are really up against it right now. These are urgent needs, and right now it is about food. So we have identified four different organizations that we're supporting here with the resources that we are accumulating and raising here, along with the consciousness and the awareness. And on the food line, it's Feeding America and Father Joe's Villages, which is a stalwart example of everything good in the world and then on the medical care and medical equipment side we have champions for health which is the organization of healthcare professionals doctors nurses social workers you name it everybody in the healthcare system these people are members of champions for health and when there's a hot spot when there's trouble of whatever nature right now it's all covid-19 these incredible humanitarians, skilled professionals, they just risk everything and they go right there and they just say, what can we do to help? Champions for health. And then the other one is for the personal protective equipment, all the gear that the healthcare workers need. 
Imagine if we're basketball players and you go to a game and there's no ball. Yep. Imagine if you're bike riders and you go to the event and there's no bikes. Imagine if you're a doctor or a nurse or a healthcare worker and you get there and there's no gloves, there's no protective equipment, there's no mask, uh, and there's no goggles, and there's no face guards. So this is all about with get us PPE, get us PPE dot org, which is the personal protective equipment. Everything is right there. Our website is fantastic. It's all inclusive. We are a grassroots campaign. We understand that the hard rain is coming down right now, and this is a long and lonesome road, but we are going to get this job done. We will get by. We will survive. We are alive. We are Bike for Humanity. Um, very well said. And so, again, just so people are aware, it is April 25th, right? That's when we're hoping I, to... Yeah, but you can, you can do it whenever you want. <laughs> okay. This is okay. not about... This is not about sitting on the couch today, waiting for tomorrow. Okay, get out there. This is an ongoing program. Yeah. Get involved. Go to bikeforhumanity.com. There's just tons of information on that. The whole story is all laid out, how to get involved, what to do. And just bear in mind that everything we do is in 100% compliance with the CDC yep. regulations, yep. all about social distancing. We're not talking about people getting together. No, we're talking about going out by yourself and thinking and working and doing whatever it is you can. We understand that the only true freedom is 100% compliance with the law. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about bikes and basketball now. Um, I have been thinking a bit about let's say we came up with an all-time cast of five nba bike guys so okay. here's here's what i've got i i mount ride, a bike i ride my bike and i love my bike but i i'm a terrible bike rider oh this isn't about this is about love i think we we grade this on love and given your story and given your what you're doing with bike for humanity you get a you get one of the five spots so you're on my all-time nba bike guys squad how about i just bring up the rear and don't take a spot of somebody who's really good so why don't we put kevin durant in there Got it. reggie Miller, yep steph curry and who else can we put in there? You know, I think I think LeBron James has to have a spot. Well, he he's absolutely LeBron loves his bike too. Yeah. Jonathan, everybody loves their bike. They do. It's true. I mean, <laughs> it's the greatest feeling in the world. I mean, like, okay, so I have ridden my bike in all of these places, all that you can see are after. I've ridden my bike everywhere. <laughs> And so sometimes I've ridden my bike from one of those places to another one of these places. Huh. And when you do that, I mean, it's long and it's hard and it's tough, but uh, you do it and then you think back to yourself, man, if I can do that, yeah. I can do anything. <laughs> and that confidence, that, that self-esteem, that empowerment, man, I just love it. And I love to see other people riding their bikes and, and, and how much joy they get out of it. And then... And then I watch the pros, and I watch the racers, yep. and I watch the, the Peter Sagan and the Julian Alaphilippe's and the Aiden Bernal and uh, Garen Thomas and all these people. I just say, oh, my gosh. It, yeah. It's just so beautiful. One of the things I do in my life is that every year I record – on my television and DVR, I record the Tour de France. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I rewatch it all year long. Mm. And so now that I'm uh, isolated and stay at home and sheltered in place, you know, I've been getting to watch it a lot more and very in depth. And these guys, man, <laughs> they are the greatest and the toughest athletes I have ever seen. Mm. They, they never stop, they go just day after day for five and six hours at a time at full speed oh my gosh and they get off their bikes and, and they look like oh yeah i guess i guess we just did that what are we doing tomorrow it's unbelievable i gotta ask you though we talking about our all-time nba bike guys so just to recap we had 
LeBron, uh, Kevin Katie, Durant, Katie. Reggie Katie. Miller. Yep, who I who I rode with in Malibu. We got to mountain bike with yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Reggie won't call me back, so I. I, I, I <laughs> but that doesn't mean I love him. Yeah, uh, I love um, Reggie, and, uh, and 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 I had the privilege of broadcasting him at the peak of his NBA career mm. in Indiana. His whole career was in Indiana. Yeah, and an outstanding broadcaster. And but uh, he still doesn't call me back. He's okay. But that's I, okay. I told him when I met him, I was straight up. You know, I I grew up in Chicago. So I was yeah. like, hey, Reggie, it's great to meet you, but man, I hated you growing up. And uh, it's, we've come around. It, it went well. Sir, please. <laughs> he is a very strong I know, word. but Reggie, you know, you know those Pacer Bulls matchups? There's no time for heat. I, mean, I know. Maybe you, were, maybe you respected him a lot and you feared his prowess, but to, but to hate someone? Because they're really good at something. Oh I my know. God, Jonathan, you, we need to work on your growth and personal development. <laughs> well, I was a lot younger then, and yeah, he was terrifying. I mean, he was so good; he was definitely terrifying. So, a lot of respect and fear. And he, and he was just clutch, and he was in fantastic shape, and yeah. incredibly durable and spectacular. He went to UCLA, uh, and just a, a, an outstanding dude. And yeah. I'm told bike rider. I've seen videos of him, but I've, I've never, you know, I'm a solo rider. Hmm. That's the, that's what I prefer to do. Yep. And it, for me, it's safer. And number two, I can convince myself that I'm going fast. <laughs> that's good. You mentioned Steph Curry. I didn't know Steph was a bike guy. Steph loves everything. Steph loves that's life. True. That's it's true. one of my favorites. And so, yeah. Okay, fair enough. That's, I think we got our list then. We got our top five. Um, kind of a related question. You were talking about how amazed you are by the cardio. Duggan and Julian Alaphilippe and Egan Bernal on our team too. I mean, come on. Garrett Ma- Thomas. Those guys. How, are they, how are they with the basketball? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> um. Kind of a related question. I just was curious as we're talking about people with amazing motors and amazing cardio. Yeah. Who, if I ask you, who were some of the standout best you ever saw, like cardio guys in the NBA? Did any oh, names come? To- Kareem was the best at everything that I ever played against. Hmm. And now my favorite was Bill Russell. You know, I, I found Bill Russell as a little a nine or ten year old boy. And uh, I found him by listening to the radio in the Laker broadcast with Chick Hearn, the greatest broadcaster yeah. ever. Yeah. And now we have Phil Liggett, who was the Chick Hearn of cycling. Yeah. And so and when I was a little boy growing up, I, I, I would be out in the backyard or at the park or whatever, dribbling the ball up and down the street, and just that, the, the, the whole world playing out in my mind. And that world was narrated by Chick Hearn. Mm-hmm. And now I haven't been able to play basketball, Jonathan, in 35 years mm-hmm. because of my orthopedic health challenges. Mm-hmm. And but I can ride my bike, and so when I ride my bike now, and wherever I'm going, Yosemite, Death Valley, Colorado Plateau, Death uh, Monument Valley, Grand Canyon, Colorado, California Redwoods, and uh, the High Sierra, I've got Phil Liggett in my ear. He's calling the action, That's and the cool. road just popped up and. St- Stood straight up in his face. <laughs> Man, the race is out in front of you. And I just love Phil Liggett and what a thrill and privilege and honor it has been for me to get to meet him and to get to know him. And he loves his bike too. Yep, another guy. All right, I had three things I wanted to talk about with you. We had sure. bikes, we had basketball, yep. and we got to talk a little bit about Bob Dylan. Now, you Uh-oh. get... You get asked a lot about the Grateful Dead, and you do you do talk about Dylan a good amount. But as this is something you and I have in common, Dylan's my guy, and so I would be curious if, like, I don't know if you do what I kind of do, which is at different times, different albums you kind of come back to, and it just grips you and gets your attention all over again. I was curious if you're kind of rotating through any Dylan these days, like if, is any song or any album just jumping out at you right now? So I am no longer an album guy. 
I do not yep. have a record yep. player. Although people keep encouraging me, encouraging me to go back <laughs> to records. But uh, my music is electronic now. And yeah. so I've got this f- fantastic collection, you know, tens of thousands of songs. And it's got all my guys on it. Yeah. Uh, it's rock music, country music, classical music. It's yeah. got all different kinds of stuff. It's got reggae. Uh, it, everything that I love is on yeah. there. And all the artists that I love. And, yeah. Uh, I could go through a bunch of them right now and tell you who they are, but just know that it's everybody. Uh-huh. And, and so and every day, every moment, I, I got it playing, except when I'm working on another project that I can't have music on. Yep. And so to get it going, all I have to do is push shuffle, and then it just starts, and it goes. And somehow, some way, Jonathan, the shuffle knows. The <laughs> shuffle knows what I need. And all of a sudden, it'll pop up. Huh. And then when that song pops up, and I just then know how to push the other button, which is repeat constantly, endlessly. And so I've got one of those going right now. I had one of those going yesterday. Hmm. I'll get, it really frustrates my wife, Lori, when <laughs> one song that I play lasts for more than a month at a time. And so, but that's okay with me because uh, the great thing about music is that it's how you're feeling that day and yeah. what that song means to you that day. Yeah. And I don't ever try to explain what it means to other people or what I think it means to me mm-hmm. because I know that every single day is going to change. And, I love Bob Dylan, and Bob is just such a spectacular spiritual force of nature, and the way that he is releasing the songs right now, uh, Murder Most Foul, most recently, uh, a new one just came out today, Um, Hmm. and I'm just, uh, uh, the, I have to, I I can't, yeah, the name escapes me right now. I'd have to look at my phone, and I don't want to. You look very young, Jonathan. You look. What, what were you doing in 1987? 87. That's a were good you question. Born? Were you born? I was born. Yeah, yeah. In okay. fact, I was in uh, middle were school. On, were you on the Dylan and the Dead tour? No. Oh my gosh. No. So uh, I got a lot of envy here from. Well, don't be envious. Be happy for the people who were there mm. and then go out and get on the next tour. Uh, uh, <laughs> it, it was so fun and so exhilarating and so stimulating. And I can just still hear all, all the music and, uh, and the practice sessions from that tour, the tour itself, the album release, the mm. artwork. It just absolutely fantastic. Bob Dylan, the Grateful Dead. Yes, would have loved it to have Neil Young, Jimmy Cliff, John Fogarty, Jackson Brown, Beach Boys, Rolling Stones, John Lennon, George Harrison, all of them. It's an endless list. You yeah. Know. Yeah. Although, do not wear headphones when you're outdoors riding your bike. Uh-huh. Please, yeah. listen, listen to nature. And listen for the cars. Safety first. You know, I've watched a lot of basketball in my day. And I will say that my single favorite moment of basketball commentary came from you. I, th- I'm, I think it was during like an, maybe an Oregon versus Arizona State game. When you just started an amazing monologue about I think a Bob Dylan speech that you had seen a day or two before. And I, I, there's a link to this. So I'm going to actually put this in the show notes to this episode. And (laughs) it's amazing. And your, you know, your, your, uh, your partner in commentary is kind of trying to, you know, nudge you like, Hey, you know, there's a basketball game going on here. You just keep waving them off. And I thought it was spectacular. And I thought it, I thought, uh, this, you're talking about somebody who deserves, who deserves to, uh, you know, the basketball game was going on. They were doing fine. And, uh, I, I appreciate it. 
on the screen. You can watch that. Yeah. So pretty good. Um, Bill, this has been fantastic. I love Bob Dylan. Yeah. And it, uh, what, what, what a privilege for us to be alive and to have him in our lives. Yeah. And still working, still going, yeah. the never ending tour. Yeah. And we go as often as we can. We listen all the time. The new stuff, the creative stuff, the books, yeah. the movies. I mean, well, I think we we've talked about basketball. We've talked about bikes. We've talked about Bob. Um, so let's see: basketball, bikes, and Bob. That's the three Bs. The three Bs. I think uh, you know. Well, see, with, we're, in, we're in California, where I am. You're in Colorado. Those are the three Bs in our life. When you're in Kentucky, the three <laughs> Bs are betting, bourbon, bourbon. And betting. There you go. Yeah. But I'm very proud to be in California. Hmm. I am a California patriot. Yeah, am, you are. I am California strong. But I should <laughs> love Colorado. And I love Crested Butte. Mm. And I'm just looking forward to the next time I get up there and ride my bike. You've got an open invitation. Once we get past this COVID-19 world, nothing we'd love more than to have you come visit us. Okay. You paved the road and it goes up there now. Yeah. So, it's, you know, it's, you're all good. Okay. So, yeah. So I'll start at the bottom and ride at the top and we'll meet there and we'll, uh, and we'll share a great glass of water and look around at the beautiful sky. And then you can tell me which images from what we're looking at right there from Crested Butte at the panoramic expanse should I add to this mural of life right behind me? Oh, I like this. Okay. Now, now, now we really need to make this happen. So, um, well, I'd love to come see that Merle in person at some point. We'll You're see. always we're in San Diego here, Jonathan. Hmm. Well, listen, Bill, thanks so much. And again, um, I really appreciate what you're doing with Bike for Humanity. And we will, get, will survive. We are alive. We are Bike for Humanity. Go to our website. It's all right there. Yeah. Bikeforhumanity.com. Right next to BobDillon.com. As efficient, <laughs> productive, and dynamic a website and comprehensive as you'll ever find. Hmm. Bikeforhumanity.com. Hmm. Bill, you are so fun to talk to, and I, I admire your energy and your efforts. And uh, man, just keep, please keep doing you. Keep being you. Let's do it some more. And thank you for expanding the horizons on the mural of life to get me to now believe that not all blisters are bad. Thank you. <laughs> we've, we've made a little difference today, I think. So, Progress. well, hey. This Bill, review. Yes, I love it. Bill, thanks so much. We'll look forward to talking to you again soon. <laughs>